nighttime in Cork City. The quays and waterfronts are filled with people enjoying the best the city has to offer. But these revellers aren't the only Corkonians out tonight. On the banks of the river, as locals make their way home and traffic flows over the many bridges linking the city together, wildlife is out, making the most of the river's riches. Herons snack on fish on the old steps, whilst on the pontoons and in the open water, one of Cork's most elusive residents is hunting. A small patch of bubbles is the only sign amidst the city lights. The nature and character of Cork City is inextricably linked to the River Lee. If you take a wander along the banks, you'll often see lots and lots of wildlife, with gulls and other water birds like cormorants commonly feeding in the river. As it flows through the city and out to sea, the Lee creates a variety of habitats that support a diverse community of plants and animals. As you cross over the many bridges in Cork City, be sure to take a look down at the banks and quays. The steps and platforms may often look empty, but don't be fooled. These are favourite spots for otters in the city. On a rainy day, the quays are quiet, as most of Cork's residents try to keep out of the weather. For otters, however, the rain is no bother, and making the most of the peace, they climb out of the water for a roll and a scratch, marking their territory on the ancient quays. Spooked by a passerby, it's straight back into the water. Once widespread throughout Europe, otter numbers declined dramatically on the continent during the 1960s and 70s. However, surveys here have shown Ireland to be a stronghold for the European otter, with an estimated 15,000 to 16,000 adults, making these otters of international importance. As the lights fade in the city, we head down river to the coastal town of Cove, the famous last stop of the Titanic. Cork is the second largest natural harbour in the world, and it's a busy working hub. Cove is home to the Cork pilot boats that help guide ships through the tricky navigational channel. However, they are not the only users of their dock. As the night shift begins, the pilots head out to guide the constant stream of freight traffic in and out of the port, leaving the dock quiet and empty for its more subtle residents. Without warning, the otters are up onto the boats and along the pontoon. The ropes and tie-ups are a perfect place to sprint and scent mark. Otters belong to the mustelids family, along with badgers and stoats. For all mustelids, scent marking is an important form of communication. By sprinting, Otters mark their territories, tell each other about the food in the area and about the breeding status of females. After marking their territory and checking out a half-eaten crab, it's back into the water to hunt out some dinner. Across the water in Crosshaven, the resident otters have also learned that human activity can have its advantages. They know the returning fishing boats are a chance for an easy meal. In the quiet hours of the evening, once most of the work around the docks has stopped, the otters slink out of the darkness and up onto the pontoon. This female has chosen the dock to raise her young, using the returning fishing boats to help supplement her hunting efforts. She is looking for scraps, but today is not her day. Otters have two to three cubs which are normally born in dens, called holts, which can be in a tree root system, a hole in the bank, or under a pile of rocks. This female has chosen a hole under the pier as a perfect place to raise her family. About 10 weeks elapse before cubs venture out of the holt with their mother, who raises the cubs without help from the male. The noise of an approaching boat attracts the female back to the pier. After waiting for the trawler to dock, she's up to investigate. Peeking over, 
and through the sides. She checks the coast is clear. And after a final look, she jumps aboard. Returning with a fish caught in the nets, she gets tucked in. This one, however, is for the cubs, who are quite vocal in their excitement. Surveys of otter in Cork City show certain areas are particularly important. A tributary of the Lee, the Bride, flows through the suburb of Blackpool. Surrounded by residential houses, retail parks and shopping malls, it seems an unlikely place to find otters. But this river is a hotbed of otter activity. During 2016 and 17, Cork Nature Network undertook a citizen science project to survey the river looking for otter sprint or otter faeces. By locating and counting sprint, we can make estimates of how much a river is used by otters. DNA analysis helps identify the number of individuals, with 11 recorded on the River Bride alone. A popular sprinting site on the Bride is below a drive through restaurant. Unbeknownst to the line of cars waiting to pick up a takeaway, otters patrol the rocks below. The Bride is an important river for the city's otters because of the trees and other vegetation along its banks. Otters are semi-aquatic, and while dependent on the river for food, otters will often travel along the river banks to save energy rather than swimming against the flow of the water. Despite the otter's ability to adapt to human activity and the urban environment, our extreme modification of Cork's rivers is leaving less and less room for our otters. Here in Blackpool, to protect against flooding, a large section of the river is to be culverted, essentially burying the river underground, removing the light needed for plant life and disrupting aquatic food chains. This means fewer fish and less food for the otters. Without the banks to rest or build their holts, this section of river, once so important to the otters of Cork, will see them disappear. And not only the otters, but all of the wildlife that relied on this vibrant little river will be gone. Having proven themselves resilient and adaptable mammals, Given some space and natural habitat, otters can thrive alongside people. Across Europe, cities are beginning to celebrate the return of otters to their rivers. Here in Cork, we have the opportunity to lead the way in urban otter conservation by ensuring these magnificent animals are protected and cherished. Next time you're out for an evening in Cork, be sure to take a look down on the quays and pontoons, because if you're lucky, you might just catch a glimpse of our city otters right below your feet. <laughs>